Hey folks, this is Kalani. The dev team are definitely cutting it close with this one. One of the most important features relating to the profession's overhaul in Dragonflight is the crafting order system or work order system. This really opens up endgame crafting especially, giving us new ways to craft gear for other players or to get gear crafted for ourselves. It also lets you use bind on pickup materials to get stuff crafted for you for the first time. It gives us new ways to quickly gear up and we can take advantage of high level crafting without actually needing to have high level crafting. The only problem with this system so far was that it hadn't been tested this entire time through alpha and beta until now. They really waited until the very last moment for this one. This feature was finally enabled on the beta realms for testing and it's every bit as awesome as I was hoping it would be. So in this video we're going to break down how it works, how it changes professions for the better and why this could be the most important new feature for making gold in Dragonflight. This is Crafting Orders Explained and everything you need to know about this new way to buy or craft gear. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Let's start by going over the general idea of a crafting order or a work order and see how the whole process works from both sides of the order. To create a crafting order you'll need to visit very specific NPCs, the crafting order clerks, who can be found in the professions area of Valdraken. It's very easy to spot, there are also several quests that point you here, so finding this should be pretty easy. Talk to the clerk and you can search through the listings for any and all crafting recipes that are eligible for you to create an order for. Some items cannot be ordered, like consumables such as potions, you can only purchase them from the auction house. So this is more to do with items you'll be equipping or using like gear, bags, battle pets, upgraded trade materials and then profession equipment is going to be a big one for sure. You can navigate through the filters on the left to narrow it down or if you know the name of the item you want you can just search for it directly at the top. When you've found the item you want to make an order for, you can see all of the materials that would be required to craft that item. For any early crafts, like for uncommon or rare items, these materials are usually not too bad and you can provide them if you want, or you can make a work order with no materials and the crafter will have to fill those in on their end. It's worth noting that you cannot partially provide materials, it's all or nothing. So if a recipe requires 10 leather, you can't put in 5, you have to put in 0 or 10, which probably makes it easier on the the back end for this system as a whole. You can then also decide on any extras you might like such as increasing the item level with a specific matrix or choosing which secondary stats you want the item to have. You can provide these materials if you want those extra effects. Now when you get into the higher tier of crafted items, things change a little. Higher crafts have items that you must provide to create a work order. For the most part these are bind on pickup materials. The two big ones are Spark of Ingenuity, which is required in almost any high level crafting recipe, as well as Primal Chaos, which is also required in almost every high end recipe. These two materials are what will limit your overall crafting speed, because they're bind on pickup with very specific sources. We'll touch on that in a future video. But but essentially to have higher tier stuff crafted you have to provide the hardest to obtain materials. You can then also provide the other mats if you wish as well as the secondary options like increasing item level, customizing secondary stats or adding embellishments to the resulting piece of gear. When you've decided on your recipe and what you want to contribute to it, you then have an option on the left to add a note for the crafter, add a commission fee for the crafter who picks up your order, and you can change how long you want the order to be up for. Bear in mind that whenever you don't provide a material and the crafter then has to use their own to complete that order, they are going to expect you to pay for that in the commission. So your commission will have to be larger than the cost of the raw materials, otherwise no crafter will complete your order. Now that's for public orders, at the top right we have a drop down and you can swap this to a personal order, or if you're in a guild you'll probably also have the guild order option here. A personal order lets you add in a player name so you can send this to a very specific person, maybe you have a guildie who handles a specific profession, or you know someone on your server with the very best blacksmithing specialization for the item you're specifically wanting, or you can even fill in your alt names here if you want to send it to one of your alts to fill without clogging up the public work order board. So that's how you place an order. Pretty simple and very customizable. You can order almost any recipe that can be crafted here. So if someone out there has the recipe and can complete the craft, you can get that item providing you have the necessary materials. The rarer the craft and the better the crafter, the higher you should expect to pay in commission, but it should be worth it for some shiny items. I think this is going to be a very interesting addition to the game and will help professions flourish as an end game experience. 
Let's take a look at what this will be like for the crafters picking up and completing those orders. In Dragonflight, each profession will have its own profession table. These can be found scattered around the Dragon Isles, but there are at least one of each in the Valdraken City Hub, so that's probably where a lot of the crafting is going to happen. The tables aren't required for every recipe, but they are required for all of the higher tier recipes, and the most relevant part to this video is that you can only see crafting orders at your profession table. If you open up your profession window, there's a new tab at the bottom for crafting orders. If you aren't near a table, it will tell you you must be near a crafting table to access crafting orders, so you can't do any of this out in the world. It will have to be at very specific locations. But when we get to a table, we can open up that menu and check to see any and all current crafting orders. You can filter again by picking recipes on the left, or you can just hit search at the top to see all orders for your profession. Now, because this is still on the beta and it's on the leveling realm, there are only a handful full of orders to look at, but it's good enough to get a general idea of how it works for when Dragonflight goes live. When the game is live, I fully expect this window to be absolutely full of crafting orders, and most of them probably won't be worth taking, but let's see how the process works. Each order tells you what item that player wants, the name of the player creating the order, the current commission being offered to complete that order, how many reagents are being provided, and then how long is left on the order itself. If you hover over the reagents column, you can even see which materials are being offered, which is definitely a nice touch. Up at the top, we can also swap between public and personal orders, so if you're expecting an order or you've made a bit of a name for yourself, you can check your personal orders very easily to see if there's anything in there you might want to take on before going to the public board. If you want to craft specific items for skill ups, first craft knowledge, or because those items typically give the most gold, you can search for individual recipes on the left, and that will show you if there are any current listings for that item. You do also have quite a few filters to work with, so you can specifically filter just for skill ups, or just for first craft knowledge, and even just for what you have the materials for. If you just want to craft whatever is available for the most gold you can get, searching for everything and looking through the listings will probably be your best bet. So, what if you see a really good offer that you want to fill? Well, you click on that order and that takes you to a more detailed view. We can see how this item is going to be crafted, what materials are provided, which materials you would need to use, an expected quality of the item with your various bonuses, and then the commission and cut are there clear as day as well. If you think the commission is worth the craft, you can start the order. As soon as you start or accept an order, you have 30 minutes to fulfill it. So you kind of lock in this order for 30 minutes. No one else can accept it for that duration, but if you don't fill it within 30 minutes, you auto-cancel it and it goes back onto the board. You can also only accept one order at a time, so you can't accept a bunch all at once and then try to fill them all within 30 minutes. One order at a time, with a 30 minute timer to get it done. Until you either abandon that order or complete it, you won't be able to pick up another one. So you can quickly snatch up a very good offer or order, but if you can't finalize it within 30 minutes, you will lose out on it. This is actually great, in my opinion. It gives you time to get things together if needed, but it doesn't allow you to hold an offer for an extended period of time. You could actually hold these hostage if you had a longer timer, which would be incredibly toxic. It also doesn't let you spam orders and hog up the entire server, so it gives everyone a chance to get some orders in. Now there is another limit with this system, you can only fill 30 public orders per day. The limit doesn't seem to apply to personal orders, so if you have players sending you offers or orders directly, that should be fine, but you have a cap of 30 per day for the public board. So you can't sit here all day and take up all the jewel crafting or blacksmithing or leatherworking orders, you will have to share. This again prevents one person from cornering the market entirely, though if you get some good business and make a name for yourself, you can bypass that restriction with private crafting orders anyway, and that pretty much covers it, I think, from both the crafter's side and the ordering side. Before we move on though, there is another very interesting feature in the profession overhaul that you might not know about called recrafting. Essentially, you get to recraft the same item that you have, but it will cost far fewer materials, especially rarer materials, which means you can craft an item early on and then upgrade it later by using recrafting. You can recraft to add extra effects, increase quality, or even use the item level boosting matrixes, so you don't have to wait to craft items that are higher quality to try and save materials. You can craft them early, secure that big upgrade, and then recraft later on to upgrade when you want to. This is huge for gearing options from professions, and it really adds to the whole system. 
But what's relevant here is that you can order a recraft as a crafting order. You put in your shiny gear, ask for a specific recraft result, and hope someone can fill it. So again, you can benefit from the recrafting potential of higher skilled professions without actually having the profession yourself. I would expect to pay a very hefty commission on this kind of recraft though, so that's always worth considering. Now this might all sound just like the auction house but with more steps, and you're not entirely wrong but I do think those extra steps are incredibly important and very valuable. Now as I said earlier, there are items that can only be bought and sold on the auction house, potions, gems, other consumables, and that might actually be the most efficient way of buying what you're after. But the crafting order system gives you flexibility, and it allows you to craft items that you can't sell on the auction house. Any bind on pickup items or crafts that require bind on pickup materials, those are specifically going to be craftable in the crafting order system. There's no other way to craft that item for another player. But in addition to that, you can create a crafting order for something that is out of stock, so to speak. If you really want a specific item, maybe with a specific set of stats or at a specific quality, or maybe that item just isn't on the auction house at all, you can create a crafting order, set your terms with payment and materials, and if the deal is good enough, a crafter will make that item directly for you without you having to go out and search for the crafter. So no more barking in trade chat for a leather worker for one specific niche item, you can just access the entire server's worth of leather workers with the crafting order system. That's huge, and it's going to save you a lot of time and potentially a lot of gold in the long run. But perhaps where this system really shines is on the crafter's side of things. Typically when you're leveling up crafting, or even just trying to make some gold later on, you buy up the materials needed and craft the item. That creates a lot of overhead, you have to spend gold or time to craft the item, and then hope it sells at a high enough price to recoup your investment, plus a bit of profit so you can keep working on your profession. The crafting orders kind of remove that overhead. You can work almost purely based on commission, which means you don't have to supply anything and you don't have to invest any gold or materials. You can look through the work orders and see which have materials provided, so the only thing you lose is a bit of time checking the board. Depending on how generous some players are, or how badly or quickly they need an item, you could get a lot of pure commission gold simply from crafting what other players are asking for. Now you can also fulfill crafts that use your own materials, and it could be very lucrative to do so, but you'll need to do a little bit of number work to see what ends up being worthwhile. You'll need to check auction house prices quite often to keep track of the cost of materials. If you end up completing a crafting order that offers a thousand gold, but you spend 1500 gold worth of materials to complete it, well that's not entirely worthwhile now is it? But where this gets really interesting to me is that you can skill up from crafting orders. This could be huge because profession skill is actually super important in Dragonflight. The higher your skill, the higher the quality of items you can craft. Higher quality is always better, so you want to get your skill as high as possible. The problem with that in Dragonflight is that your skill kinda soft caps around 50. That's when you learn your last recipes from the trainers and when things start to slow down considerably. What's weird is that you actually only need 50 skill to learn almost any recipe in the game, so the very highest tier of crafted gear, you can learn that at 50 skill in your profession. So you don't necessarily need more than 50 skill, but every extra point of skill helps you work towards those higher quality tiers, which is going to be very important if you want to be a good crafter. That does mean, however, that the recipes that will give you skill ups past the level 50 mark are going to be very expensive. It's quite convenient then really that you can get skill ups from completing those recipes via a crafting order. If the player provides all the materials and offers you a commission, that means you can get skill ups and make gold at the same time. You can skill up your profession for free and make gold. That's going to be insane, and it's going to make your specialization choices very important. What's potentially even more important here is that if you craft an item for the first time via a work order, you also get the first time crafting bonus and the knowledge that goes along with it. Profession knowledge is going to be huge in Dragonflight, so if you can craft the expensive recipes for someone else, and they provide the materials, that's one extra knowledge that you get for free as well. Now arguably we have been able to do this in the game for a long time. Do you remember the days of sitting in Stormwind or Ogrimmar spamming trade chat with Taylor looking for work or Enchanter looking for work, just trying to get those extra little skill points in without having to spend your own gold if at all possible? Well this is basically the same thing, except you don't have to barter in trade. Everything is contained within the order system, giving every player access to every crafter, and every crafter access to every player. It really opens things up and almost guarantees 
that someone has the exact thing you want made or want to make. So I really think this new system will give crafters so many more options and it's going to help professions really shine in Dragonflight. Obviously, you also have the benefit as a non-crafter of having access to every crafting recipe at Endgame, more or less, without having to actually level the profession yourself. All you need is someone, somewhere, who checks the crafting orders board to have what you need, so you can farm all of your own materials, cut out potentially high auction house costs, and the only thing you have to do is to provide enough of a commission to make it worth the crafter's time. That's going to be massive for some of the more expensive high-end crafts. Instead of paying the usually hyper-inflated gold gold price for epic crafting materials, you can farm them all up yourself and have a super high item level piece of gear crafted for you, all without putting in the time or effort in yourself to level up that profession or earn the knowledge required to craft that item. Honestly, crafting orders just provide so much extra flexibility and more options for how to obtain the items you're looking for. Sure, you can just buy whatever is available in the auction house, but the crafting order system gives everyone a chance to make use of the huge profession overhaul coming in Dragonflight, and it lets crafters really set themselves apart with a quality feature and specializations. I'm really excited to see how Dragonflight plays out with the crafting orders in game. I think it's going to shake up the entire end game economy and give professions a seat at the table in terms of end game progression. That's really exciting to me. But that's the new crafting order system coming with the profession overhaul in Dragonflight, how it works, why it's useful, and really everything you should need to know to take advantage of it for some massive gold farming potential. What do you think of the system for what you've seen so far? Are you planning on taking advantage of the crafting orders in any specific way? Maybe having a mini alt army of crafters you can send personal requests to, use orders to obtain items without leveling up professions, or maybe try to become one of the best crafters for a specific type of item? Leave all your thoughts in the the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.